Hey, what's up, you crazy daily theologians? Today I wanted to talk about the debt snowball. I came from the investment space and the financial services world, and I actually worked at Dave Ramsey, but this is not investment advice. However, this is common sense biblical advice when it comes to debt. Now, who wins the debt snowball or paying off the highest interest rate first? People will often think that money or their lack of money or their debt uh, represents an intellectual problem where there's some sort of deficiency in what their background has been, what they've been taught. They don't have the skills, but in reality, they look like this guy. They're stressed out and they do have the skills. It's very simple. Spend less than you make and you will have a positive cash flow, which leads to savings. Now, avoid debt at all costs. This is very important. It's never wise to borrow, but let's assume you're in a position where you have bills coming in and they're piling up on you. Well, according to an article over at Ramsey Solutions, Total American Auto Loans is a $1.37 trillion industry and the average person has a whopping $554 in payments, which is ridiculous. That's almost a house payment, $391 for you. So you can get a $3,000 car that will get you around town. In fact, more than 56% or 56% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So is it any wonder that their house looks like it's getting hit by lightning. I don't think so. The reason that this is a problem is there's no room for anything else. So people are overspending and then their solution is to get stressed out and worry about interest rates. Well, interest rates can matter, but at the end of the day, the core issue is you're borrowing money that you don't have to pay for things that you can't afford. You need to understand the problem isn't your interest rate. It's actually the person in the mirror borrowing the money. Ouch. I know that hurts. It's not Visa's fault, though they are potentially predatory. Like, I don't necessarily recommend that people have credit cards, uh, especially as believers. I don't think it's wise because it puts you in a situation where it's too easy to spend money that you don't have. And they know this. So number one, what to do? Start with the smallest debt first, the smallest balance. This is what is called the debt snowball. It helps you build momentum by paying off the smallest balance first, get some wins, and then keep going and take that payment and you roll it into the next one. And then you pay that off, take that payment, roll in the next one, and you're making progress. And what you need to do is stop spending, stop going into debt, stop going the wrong way. And remember that godliness with contentment is great gain. Don't let money control your life. Don't let money become an idol. Don't become a slave to the lender, as many people are doing. It is unwise and it prohibits you from following things and looking for things that are actually eternal and matter. Now, money is a tool, but many people are controlled by it. Every waking hour is spent thinking about money. So don't be one of those people. Repent and believe the gospel. Put all of your trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You'll be freed from the ultimate debt of sin, which results in the wrath of God and hell, and freed and adopted into God's kingdom, and then you can make progress on your finances, but don't be enslaved by them. Thanks for watching. Remember to hammer that like button, like the 95 Theses, and thanks for watching. Leave a comment below. God bless.